There is a cheating epidemic going on in gaming right now, and for this video in particular, I'm going to be focusing on Call of Duty specifically, and, you know, the cheating problem in Call of Duty that's been going on for so long, and it currently got worse, and it's probably just going to continue to get bad as time goes on. I really just wanted to sit down and talk with you guys and share my thoughts on all this stuff, because most recently, there was a pretty massive ban wave across Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone that banned, I think, almost 60,000 accounts. And we're not talking about, like, the shadow ban or a temporary ban, we're talking about permanently being banned from playing Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, and potentially some of the other, like, newer Call of Duty games, like Modern Warfare 2019 and up. So, the question is, what did they get bans for? Well, it looks like this time around, the accounts got permanently banned for using unlock tools. Now, if you're not familiar with what an unlock tool is, that's okay, because honestly, I'm not overly familiar with what it is as well. I'm not exactly sure if it's like a mod menu in the sense that you pay someone to essentially mod your account and unlock all of the camos for it. It's not like this stuff is super new. This stuff has been happening ever since the original Modern Warfare 2. Back in the day, it was actually really common for people to charge you like 1600 Microsoft points or the equivalent of $20 to get you a challenge lobby or to unlock everything for your account. But yeah, I'm not exactly sure if unlock tools are the same because it's just not something that I'm familiar with. You guys already know, I don't cheat in Call of Duty games, I have no interest in it. I've been doing this for so long and I have no desire to cheat or, you know, unlock the camos at a rapid pace by paying someone else money. That just sounds stupid. Between you and me, it seems like people are pretty upset about getting banned for using unlock tools and getting all the camos in the game. There's people on Twitter providing such evidence as saying, I got banned for no reason. Please fix this Activision. That has got to be one of the most common things that I've seen. And it's just bull- But before we open up that can of worms, we need to talk about some other things first. Because some people don't consider using an unlock tool to be cheating in a Call of Duty game. They just look at it as, I've paid money for the camos. They don't look at it in the same light as someone using an aimbot, or using wall hacks, or god mode, or, you know, more serious offensive ways of cheating. So that begs the question, what do we consider to be cheating in a Call of Duty game, and what does Activision consider to be cheating in a Call of Duty game? Let's start out by talking about what we as a community consider to be cheating because there's a lot of people on Twitter. I've seen it, man. I've been looking at so many different tweets and there's been so many accounts because this has been trending on Twitter as well. There's so many people saying that using an unlock tool and getting the camos by paying someone money in order to exploit the game and get them in an unfair and cheap way, they're saying that that is not cheating. Therefore, they don't deserve to be permanently banned on the newer Call of Duty games. What do you guys think about that? I feel like when it comes to the unlock tool stuff, I'm torn somewhere in the middle because look, it is just camos. They're just pixels. They're just nice looking things on your gun, right? And this is also something I've seen a lot on Twitter. There's a lot of people that are saying it's not that big of a deal because they're just camos, they're just pixels, they're just funny looking colors on the guns, right? It doesn't matter, it's not that big of a deal, bro. They're saying stuff like that, but then they're also spending money to do this. They're paying someone else money to get an unlock tool and get this stuff on their account. So which is it? Is it not a big deal or is it a big deal? Because if you're willing to spend your own money to have a person or a cheating company unlock this stuff for you for your account, it must be a pretty big deal. This is exactly why I'm so torn on this subject, because I do kind of understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, I'm someone that spends hours, if not days, of in-game time on these games to unlock all of the camos myself. It's called the Mastery Camo for a reason. If you're just paying money to get it unlocked cheaply and quickly, that doesn't really mean anything to me. And what makes this even more convoluted and stupid is that there could be people out there who are bragging about unlocking the Mastery Camos when the reality is that they could have just spent money for an unlock tool. So as I'm sure you can tell by now, this completely degrades the experience and the joy of actually unlocking it yourself. And in a sense, you are still cheating. Like, you did not fairly earn and unlock that camo, you paid someone else to exploit the game for you. I don't know if people are trying to deflect the blame on the people who are selling the unlock tools and be like, no, I didn't do it, they did it for me, you know? But I would imagine that there's somewhere in like the terms of service for playing the newer Call of Duty games that says that you can't do stuff like this. And it seems like with this most recent permanent ban wave, they're finally taking action on it. Now, me personally, I feel like a permanent ban on all of the newest Call of Duty games might just be too harsh of a punishment for paying for unlock tools. I kind of feel like a more appropriate response would be to just ban them from using those camos. Like, they'd just be locked out permanently from ever using or unlocking mastery camos on Call of Duty games. I feel like that's a more fair punishment than stopping them from playing the game altogether. Now, that is just my silly opinion, but I feel like this is a compromise because the other solution for them was to permanently ban all these players forever. My suggestion 
suggestion or advice to you guys if you're wanting to get the camos unlocked in these newer Call of Duty games is to just unlock them yourself. Now, it does depend on which Call of Duty game it is because there have been some recent Call of Duty games where I've gone ahead and I've posted videos on the camo grinds and it will help you guys learn how you can unlock these camos faster and it will save you time and you don't have to spend money on an unlock tool. But there have also been situations where I didn't really vibe with the game, like Call of Duty Vanguard is a prime example. I did have fun with the game at launch, but over time the multiplayer just wasn't as enjoyable and I wasn't the biggest fan of Atomic Camo, so I didn't unlock it, I didn't go for it, I didn't grind for it. But at the same time, I also did not spend money for an unlock tool, so I just don't have the camo. I feel like that's a reasonable way to approach and experience the game, but I guess for some people that's just not what they want to do. Which takes us to the second question, what does Activision consider to be cheating in Call of Duty? In fairness, I don't really care to answer that and I'm sure you guys might not even really care to know because whenever you sign up to play these newer Call of Duty games, you have to accept their terms and services and their conditions. Same thing goes for the code of conduct and I'm pretty sure no one actually reads that stuff. So I don't really know if we know what they consider to be cheating. So just to be safe, don't be out there buying any kind of cheats whatsoever. Oh boy, and there's a whole other layer to this thing too because what recently happened with this ban wave is not like a shadow ban. This is a permanent ban from all Call of Duty games, at least the most recent ones. Like from Modern Warfare 2019 and up. But since this is a perma ban and not a shadow ban, people are starting to get confused and they're thinking that Activision can overturn a permanent ban. I'm pulling up Charlie Intel's Twitter real quick because I saw this and I'm not exactly sure where he got it from, but this is something that's been getting passed around like crazy on Twitter. Oh yeah, here it is. It says, if you have been permanently banned in Call of Duty, Activision has stated that permanent bans are final and there are quote, no false permanent bans. Which means that if you have been permanently banned from a Call of Duty game, then there's no overturning it and they know for a fact that you are cheating. But from some of the stuff that I've seen on Twitter, there are people claiming that they didn't cheat at all. They say, bro, I didn't do anything. There's no reason why I got banned. Fix this Activision. If you're cheating in Call of Duty, do you think they're actually gonna tell the truth? Do you think that there really is no reason as to why they got permanently banned? Come on, dude. So for this section of the video, we need to discuss what is a shadow ban and what is a perma ban. Let's start by talking about shadow bans. A shadow ban is really just a temporary ban. And this is most commonly caused by the in-game reporting function in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. Now this one has been a really heated topic as of lately because there's a lot of people that believe that they have been falsely shadow banned and they complain about it everywhere on Twitter, anything that has to do with Call of Duty, they are there replying saying, dude, I got unfairly shadow banned, help me. Even though there's nothing that we can do as content creators to do anything about that. There could be a myriad of reasons as to why someone gets shadow banned. Pretty much any reason that you see when you go to report someone in game, that is potentially a reason why someone was shadow banned. You could have typed something inappropriate in the text chat. You could have said something inappropriate in voice chat. You could be someone that is cheating or exploiting. These are all potential triggers for a shadow ban or a a temporary ban in the game. So what happens if you are shadow banned? When you're shadow banned in Modern Warfare 3 or Warzone, you are put into a separate pool of players who are also currently shadow banned in the game. And from what I've seen, it looks like Activision is collecting data from those matches to see if someone is genuinely cheating or if they just got falsely accused. Now, if you didn't do anything wrong, the shadow ban could potentially be lifted from your account in a matter of days or potentially like a week or more. From what I've seen, I haven't seen too many people that have been shadow banned for an extended period of time unless they are someone that's being targeted and they're being false reported, which we'll get into in a sec. But if you have been shadow banned and you are someone that continues to break the rules, whether that's cheating or breaking like the voice chat or text chat rules, you might get permanently banned. Think of a shadow ban or like a temporary ban as almost like Call of Duty Purgatory and they're deciding whether or not you decide to go back to heaven, which is the main experience, or if you're gonna go into the fiery pits of hell, which is not being able to play the game anymore. Yeah, that's essentially what a shadow ban is. But in fairness, we can't really talk about shadow bans without talking about false reporting or spam reporting. This has been a pretty big issue this year with Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone because more than ever before, there are people who are just spamming the report function in game even if someone isn't doing anything wrong. Did you get killed by a camper? Did someone call you a waz bag in game chat? Well, <laughs> You could just spam the report button and if you click it a certain amount of times, it might trigger something in Activision's anti-cheat system or the reporting system that could potentially shadow ban the player. It's a big problem. That is the one caveat. That's the one thing that I will agree upon that is just not really right with the system. Players should not be able to just continuously spam report an account with the hopes that they will get that person shadow banned or temp banned. And while this has been a really big problem, I do think that there is a very simple solution to this just allow players to report someone once. If you think someone is cheating in game, you should be able to click on the cheat report and be able to report that person once and that's it, at least for that match. I mean, if you do re-encounter the person at some other point in time, then yeah, 
Maybe you could send another report, but not this nonsense of being able to send like over a hundred reports of someone by just sitting on the recent player list and just spamming their account. That is horrible. So in summary for shadow bans on the newer Call of Duty games, it's basically a temporary ban that is typically triggered by the in-game reporting system. And even though people can false report you, there are actual cheaters that get shadow bans and their data gets collected from Activision to decide whether or not they are actually cheating or if they're not. And typically in most cases, if you're not cheating, the shadow ban will get lifted. And if you are cheating, you might get permanently banned. And that is gonna transition beautifully into the next section of this video, which is discussing permabans. What exactly is a permanent ban in Call of Duty and how does that happen? A permaban is much more serious because it is triggered directly by Activision themselves. I believe they have an enforcement team for the anti-cheat in the game. And if you have been permanently banned, it looks like it can't be overturned. And in the case of the most recent permaban wave, it seems like they were able to detect what type of unlock tool was being purchased and used in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, and then they just went ahead and pulled the trigger and banned all of the accounts that use that. It's absolutely wild stuff, man. But you have to keep in mind that Ricochet Anti-Cheat, ever since it was first announced, is a kernel level anti-cheat on your computer. I'm not exactly sure how that goes for consoles, but I don't think as many people are cheating on consoles nowadays anyways. It's mostly on PC. And the Ricochet Anti-Cheat is supposed to be able to detect any kind of like cheating programs on your PC. That includes the unlock tools as we know as of recently, but it should be able to detect other things on your PC that could be used for cheating as well. That could be potentially scripts or macros. It could be other programs. It could be anything that gives you like a mod menu. Again, I'm not the most familiar with this kind of stuff on the newer Call of Duty games because I don't have any interest in it and I don't even know how you get this stuff. I'm sure you could just like run a Google search on how to cheat in Modern Warfare 3 or Warzone and I'm sure you're going to be pleasantly surprised with all of the services that you have to pay for to do that. But that's not for me. But yeah, the difference between shadow bans and perma bans is that if you're shadow bans, it was most likely triggered by the in-game reporting system and it could be overturned. But if you have been permanently banned, that's a decision from Activision themselves, and they are most likely not going to overturn that. And that's why this most recent permaban wave for using unlock tools is a pretty serious thing, because they're most likely not going to undo that damage that they've done to those players. I'm pretty sure from their perspective, they're just finally enforcing their own rules, which they should have been doing for a long time now. But it's a weird thing, because with Ricochet Anti-Cheat, they're trying to collect data. They're trying to figure out why people are doing this in the first place, which I personally feel is an even more important discussion to have, which we're going to have right Right now it just seems like cheating in video games is getting worse than it ever was before like back in the day on like the og modern warfare 2 the worst thing you would see is people going around with infections and mod menus offering you a challenge lobby for like 1600 microsoft points Nowadays, there's full-blown cheating companies that are making millions of dollars off of selling cheats to people on the newer Call of Duty games. It's pathetic. And in hindsight, it was pretty pathetic back then on Modern Warfare 2 as well, but the difference is the actual scale itself. It really does seem like now more than ever before, there are people cheating at a scale that is way bigger than what we had back then. So the big question is, what is the root of the problem with cheating in video games? Is it the devs? Is it the people who actually work on the games not making a good enough anti-cheat to stop the cheaters? Or is it the cheat providers themselves who are constantly finding new and up and coming ways to find workarounds and to continue to sell cheats in the games? Or are people going to finally take responsibility for cheating in video games? Because here's the thing, when there are full blown companies, startups or entrepreneurs who are starting up cheating companies and selling cheats at a large scale to gamers, it's no longer some edgy teen with an RGH Xbox who's going to make like maybe a couple hundred dollars off of some suckers on Modern Warfare 2. It's much more serious now. Cheating in Call of Duty specifically has gone from something that could just be looked at as a somewhat fun way to enjoy or experience the game into a full-blown business for some people. So the way that I try to look at it is in business terms. We have supply and demand. And clearly, there is a good supply of companies out there that wants to sell the cheats. And maybe the supply is also enabled by the fact that the anti-cheat itself is not good enough, but there's also a bigger demand than ever to cheat in video games. But regardless of all that, it still brings us back to the main question. What is the root cause of the problem with cheating in video games? Nowadays, for pretty much any multiplayer video game, it's expected for the game to have some form of anti-cheat, which is supposed to keep people from cheating online in those games. And specifically for newer Call of Duty games, Activision has developed their own form of anti-cheat called Ricochet. But what's really strange about Ricochet is that there's different levels to it. There's different ways that Ricochet actually interacts with people who are potentially cheating and also people who got reported. Like I mentioned before, the shadow ban system can affect people who aren't cheating. Whereas the permaban system, that part of the anti-cheat tends to kick in when they detect something that is suspicious on your computer that's being used to possibly cheat in a Call of Duty game. But then there's 
there's this other really weird side to Ricochet where they have developed like these ways to troll people who are cheating. I'm not going to get into specific examples, but I'm sure you guys have seen this stuff before and I might have even covered it before in the past. I think as an example, like if you're playing Warzone and you're someone who's cheating, I think when you go to deploy in the game, you're just going to splat on the ground no matter what you try to do. Like you can't pull your shoot. I think that might be one of the things. There's other kinds of like methods, but the whole reason I'm mentioning shadow bans and perma bans and like the weird little things they do to mess with the cheaters is because some people don't really know how to feel about Ricochet anti-cheat. They don't know if it works or if it doesn't work. And I feel like the reason why there's confusion behind all this stuff is because they don't just find a unified way to deal with the cheaters in the game. Now, this is just my opinion, but I lean more in favor of harsh punishment against people who are cheating because it makes it seem like the anti-cheat is working better when people are actually getting bans and not just messed around with. If it was up to me, get rid of the shadow bans, get rid of like the little troll methods of messing around with the cheaters, just ban people who are actually cheating in Call of Duty. It's that simple. Because we have a shadow ban system and because they have these little troll methods of messing with the cheaters, it kind of muddies the water about who is cheating and who is not cheating. Now, again, that's just my opinion, but I feel like it would make more sense for Activision to step it up and continue to take serious action against people who are actually cheating at the game. So that's the Activision side of things. But what about the actual companies? There are companies that are selling these cheats to players. Welp, in the past, Activision has actually issued cease and desist, and they've taken legal action against some of the companies that are selling cheats to players. But realistically, they can only do so much about that because even if they take down one cheating company, another one's going to pop up and then another one's going to give birth and it's just never going to end. That is precisely why I mentioned the whole business aspect of this thing, because cheating in video games has become a business for some people. And if there's a big enough demand for people to cheat in Call of Duty and there is a way to supply it, then that's how people are going to make money. But now that I think about it, if there was no demand from the players, from the COD community to cheat in these games, then what would the cheating companies do? Yeah, I think we need to have a serious discussion about why people cheat in video games in the first place. Is it because there's skill issues? Is it because they want camos without having to actually put in any of the work? Or are there other reasons at play? As you see in the olden golden days of the OG Modern Warfare 2, there were all kinds of really difficult challenges you'd have to do in order to unlock some of the calling cards and the emblems. And back then in 2009, I don't know if a lot of players could pull off all those headshots necessary to get fall camo. So back then in the original Modern Warfare 2, I think the reason why a lot of people ended up potentially shelling out Microsoft points to get challenge lobbies was surely because of the desire to unlock something that was really hard to get. But we're not in 2009 anymore. People cheat for a much bigger variety of reasons than they ever would of back then. Streaming, making YouTube videos, and competing in competitive video games has become way, way more commonplace than it was back then. And really what makes this a lot more serious is the fact that there is money on the line for some of these players as well. It's not just the cheating companies and it's not Activision, it's also the people who are cheating themselves. There's always the potential that someone's going to buy cheats, whether that's an aimbot or god mode or whatever, like wall hacks, you know, the typical kinds of like really exploitative cheats that people can use to get better in video games. Cheaters can use to Stuff like that to cheat in video games at a very serious level. I mean, there's even been people who have been caught using serious cheats like this in order to win tournaments. There's people who have won prize money by cheating in Call of Duty. And look, man, I'm not trying to name certain streamers or call out like specific YouTubers or anything like that. The point of the matter is that cheating in Call of Duty is just plain wrong, no matter what you're doing. And I think in 2024, it's even worse because there's more at stake. There's more on the line than there was back in 2009 when you just wanted to get that cool looking squirrel emblem. That's not why people are cheating nowadays. It's a much more serious thing because because people can make careers out of this. Whether you're someone who manufactures the cheats and sells them and makes potentially thousands, if not millions of dollars, or if you're someone who wants to cheat in a video game to make a career online as a content creator or someone who competes. Regardless of what type of cheater you are or what game you're cheating in, you need to maybe take a step back and realize what you're doing. Because the reality of the situation is that the anti-cheat can only be so good. And the people who are selling and manufacturing the cheats, they're advancing and they're finding more and more ways to get past the anti-cheats. It doesn't matter what the game is. Cheating in video games has been a problem for so long and it doesn't matter what the game is. I know I'm focusing on Call of Duty, but there's all kinds of other multiplayer online games that are facing these same kinds of issues. And the fact of the matter is that it's never going to get better until people decide to stop cheating themselves.